हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे आवर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज पेमेंट सरफेस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स एंड पेमेंट सरफेस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स डिपेंड्स अपॉन द टाइप ऑफ पेमेंट वेदर इट इज ए ब्लैक टॉप सरफेस लाइक बिटमेस पेमेंट और कंक्रीट पेमेंट इट आल्सो डिपेंड्स अपॉन मेथड ऑफ कंस्ट्रक्शन ट्रैफिक कंडीशंस एंड क्लाइमेट देयर आर फोर इंपॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ ए पेमेंट सरफेस Slipping and skidding, friction, unevenness index or road roughness, and light reflecting characteristic. And these are required for several purposes, including traffic safety. When a wheel moves on a road, there are two types of movement. One is rotational movement. Another is longitudinal movement. or translation translatory motion rotatory motion is converted into translatory motion through the friction in a normal condition the translatory motion tm let us say translatory motion is equal to rotatory motion that is rm that means in one revolution of the wheel the distance traveled by the vehicle will be pi into d d diameter but when the translatory motion when translatory motion is more than rotatory motion of the wheel that means the rotation is less and the movement of the vehicle in forward direction is more then that is called the skidding to avoid skidding the friction resistance must be greater than the braking force in extreme condition when the full brakes are applied 100% brakes are applied then there will be no rotatory motion of the wheel only the translatory motion will occur and that is the extreme condition second condition is when the translatory motion is less than the rotatory motion of the wheel then this is called the slip slipping of the vehicle so in that case what if this happens when the force applied by the engine is more than the tractive power of the vehicle or tractive power of the engine so in that case what happens that wheel will revolve but the movement translatory motion will be less than the rotatory motion and this occurs when friction is very low and again in extreme condition this can be completely translatory motion can be zero and rotatory motion will be 100% so when you have at a say very loose sand below the wheels and in that case there will be only slippage no translatory motion of the vehicle so in slipping and skidding the major role played is of friction friction between tire and the pavement so the second pavement characteristic is friction and friction can be in two forms in longitudinal direction longitudinal direction as well as the lateral direction lateral friction and longitudinal friction now longitudinal friction comes into play when you apply brakes on a normal road or when you accelerate the vehicle on a normal road on a on a straight highway that is during braking or accelerating now this is important to decide the stopping side distance you remember that equation of stopping side distance ssd is v into t plus v square upon 2 gf now f in this equation is the longitudinal coefficient coefficient in the longitudinal direction between the tire and the pavement surface and that depends upon several factors it depends upon speed of the movement also it is low at high speed and high at low speed when this longitudinal friction is reduced then in that case the rotatory motion will increase because when there is no friction or less friction between the wheel and the pavement surface then rotatory motion will be more than the translatory motion and in extreme condition again the 
there will be no movement of the vehicle and the, the wheels will only slip. When the longitudinal friction is increased, then in that case, rotatory motion will reduce and the translatory motion will increase that is called the skidding and that will create the burning of the tire. IRC 73 2022 provides the value of this longitudinal friction F and it says that when a speed is more than or sorry less than or equal to 30 km per hour its value is 0 0.4 and when a speed is more than or equal to 80 km per hour this F is 0.35. It is low at high speed and high at low speed and in between these two the F will decrease for by 0.1 for every 10 km per hour of the speed. The second part is the lateral friction. Now lateral friction comes into picture when there is a lateral force on the vehicle. For example, when you design a horizontal curve, when a vehicle negotiates a horizontal curve then centrifugal force will act on this vehicle and this centrifugal force will be lateral force, lateral force outside the curve. Now that is where this lateral friction F comes into picture. If lateral friction is not provided then will be again skidding of the vehicle, vehicle the, these wheels will go out of the track. If you remember equation to calculate super elevation is v square e plus f is equal to v square upon 127r. Now in this equation this f is lateral friction, lateral friction between the wheel and the pavement surface. Now this lateral friction in a very extreme condition can be as low as 0.2. And that is when the pavement is completely muddy pavement. And again, if you take some factor of safety, let us say 1.33, then it becomes 0 0.15. So, in most of the calculations, this little friction is taken 0 0.15. This is 0 0.35 to 0 0.4 in longitudinal direction. This is 0 0.15 in lateral direction. So, these are two types of frictions which are important while moving on the road and this friction will depend upon several factors. It will depend upon type of a pavement surface, whether it is concrete pavement or bitumen pavement. It will depend upon the roughness of the pavement that is texture of the surface. Condition of the pavement, whether pavement surface is dry or wet, Con condition of the tire new tires with good thread or old tires with worn out threads will have different friction values. It also depends upon the speed of the vehicle, extent of braking force applied, whether brakes are being applied partially or fully. That is also because friction comes into picture only when there is a brakes, friction becomes high. Load and tire pressure and it also depends upon temperature of tire and the pavement. On the dry surface, coefficient of friction of old tire is greater than the new tire. And on the wet surface, coefficient of friction of old tire is lesser than the new tire. So, friction is important not only for the movement of the vehicle but also from safety consideration because here as I told you, SSD depends upon the friction force. The super elevation provided depends upon the friction force. The third important surface characteristic is unevenness, unevenness index or road roughness. That is the presence of undulations on the road, that is road roughness. And this road roughness or unevenness index is defined as cumulative undulations per kilometer length of the road. And therefore, it is expressed as millimeter per kilometer or meter per kilometer.
when you express is in meter per kilometer that is called IRI that is international road roughness index when you measure it through bump integrator then it is millimeter per kilometer when you measure this road roughness using bump integrator then you can convert that value into IRI also that bump integrator integrated value is 630 into IRI power 1.12 so you can rearrange these terms and you can find out IRI also from this equation after measuring there are several equipments which can be used to measure road roughness bump fifth wheel bump integrator is one of them which is mostly used you have profilometer also is a dipstick also that can be used to measure road roughness laser profilometer and now we have car excel mounted uh, integrator also and there are some accelerometer based equipment also which can measure the road roughness but road roughness is important from safety consideration also it has several consequences it has effect on road safety it has effect on vehicle operating cost it has effect on riding quality and it also has effect on speed and therefore irc sp16 provides guidelines for measurement of road roughness and also the limiting values for different class of the highways and the last is light reflecting characteristics now light reflecting characteristic is very important from safety consideration visibility over the pavement surface depend upon its color and light characteristics the glare caused by reflection of the headlight is high on wet pavement surface than on dry pavement surface similarly light colored pavement surface like cement concrete pavement gives good visibility during night but they provide more glare more reflectance during daytime the black top surface bitumen pavement provide very good visibility or less glare during daytime but very poor visibility during night time so friends these are four important pavement surface characteristic which should be considered while constructing a pavement thank you very much for watching this video if you have any question you can write in the comment box